It is wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon. Aren't you glad that you're in the house of the Lord this afternoon? If you are, say amen. If you are, say amen. Say like you mean it. Amen, amen. It's good to see everybody this afternoon. You may be seated for a short while. Good to see everybody this this afternoon. Good to see Nathan and family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see everybody in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord Jesus, we pray that as your word goes forth, that it will not return void. That God, it would accomplish everything that you have set it to accomplish. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen and amen. Darkness is something that is... We don't often talk about darkness as, as we should. Darkness is simply the absence of light. That's what darkness is. It's the ab uh, um, absence of light. The region of total darkness is called the umbra, if you ever wanted to know. If you find a place where there is no light whatsoever, which is very rare, that place is called the umbra. It's a place where there is absolute darkness, if you could put it that way. Scientists still say it's not possible to have absolute darkness because um, there is fractions of light permeating wherever we are. But if you ever find a place that is absolute darkness, that place is called the umbra. Did you know that darkness travels at the speed of light? You don't often think about that because it's opposite, right? And so as fast as light comes and as fast as light goes, darkness operates in the same sense. Darkness travels at the speed of light. Uh, there have been more people that have been into space than have been to the deepest part of the ocean. The Mariana Trench is the deepest part of the ocean. It is uh, around the Western Pacific area, um, close to the Mariana Island, and it has a maximum depth of 10,984 meters, give or take 25 meters. Uh, that's uh, equivalent to about 30, uh, 36,000 feet or about 6.8 miles deep. Uh, put it simply, if Mount Ape, uh, Everest was placed uh, in the trench, uh, the highest point of Mount Everest would still be about two kilometers away from the surface of the water. And that's about 1.2 miles from the surface of the water. Question, has anybody ever walked or tried to walk in total darkness? Yes? Have you ever tried to walk in total darkness or somewhat of a dark place? Um, it was the first time I went back to um, back home, Tanzania. Um, this was, I think it was in 2008. It was the first time I went back home after had, having been here for quite a while. And um, as it was that, you know, uh, we went to Dar es Salaam first and, you know, Dar es Salaam is a city and cities have lights and we spent a few weeks in the city and it was 
nothing different because where I'd come from, Birmingham, was similar to, you know, not as, as lit up as Birmingham was, but Dar es Salaam is quite well lit up. It's a, um, it's the unofficial capital city of Tanzania, um, but it, 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 was, it was well lit up. And so it was no different. Um, the problem came when I had to go to grandma because our grandmas, it's not quite the same. <laughs> In the village, they don't light up streets. <laughs> Oftentimes, houses are not well lit up uh, if they can afford electricity. Uh, and that's, you know, if they can afford it, most of them would go with, you know, just lanterns and candles uh, to light up places. And so um, it was quite of a, a, a shock to the system having to go to the village. But it was it shouldn't have been because I grew up with my grandma. And when I grew up with my grandma, I remember... When I was growing up with grandma, there was no electricity whatsoever. The house had no electricity. And going back this time, there was electricity. However, here's the problem. It was one of the few that had electricity. And so every time you ventured out of that house, <laughs> you were walking in faith. And I remember one time we were coming from visiting a relative with my uncle, and we were walking on this road, and I could swear it was pitch black. I could not see the front of my hand if I put it up there. And my uncle was just walking like it was nobody's business. And I was walking behind him thinking, how are you walking in this darkness? And every so often you'd see, you know, a, a person would, would uh, you know, uh, come by with their bike. And that was the only source of light you could see. And we were walking for, I would say probably about 10, 10 plus minutes in absolute darkness. It felt like absolute darkness. I was like, where are the stars? Where is the moon? It's supposed to light this place up so that I can see where I'm going. If I ever walked by faith, that was me because I couldn't see the step in front of me. And as I, as I thought about this, this idea of darkness, that story came to mind that, that walking in darkness is, is not pleasant. It wasn't a pleasant experience. One, I am kind of scared of the dark. I am kind of. I would say, <laughs> I'm not fully there. I am kind of traumatized by watching scary movies at a young age, which I should not recommend to anybody <laughs> of any sort. But it was the, trauma the, the, the traumatic, uh, traumatic experiences of watching movies at a young age that, you know, portray that sinister things come out of darkness. And the idea that of me walking in darkness and thinking to myself, somebody could pop out of nowhere and, and, and hurt us. And anything, animals could pop out. We're in a village, anything could pop out. <laughs> I, I was just, snakes could pop out, out of nowhere, you know. And so, and so I am scared of, of walking in dark places because of the trauma of watching movies I shouldn't have watched. Some of them, not my own fault. I was forced to watch them because everybody was watching them. I would say forced to watch them because everybody was watching them. But it's interesting because when I, when I think about that experience, Reminds me of the story in, in Exodus as the children of Israel coming out of the land of Egypt. One of the plagues that God gives Moses was that when in verse number 21 of Exodus chapter 10, we say it's, it reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand, and to, um, thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. <laughs> Can you imagine darkness that may be felt? Can you imagine darkness that may be felt? And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. I was only walking for about 10, 15 minutes. I can only imagine the chaos that would have been for three days with absolute darkness that felt like it was something. How 
How is that possible? And as, 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 as I've been thinking about what to uh, speak on, what to preach uh, today, um, I was reminded of what Sister Laverne preached on last week about the favor of God. The favor of God. Sister Laverne preached excellently on the favor of God and encouraged us to not only receive but walk in the favor of God because we are highly favored. But here's the thing. Before you can see the favor of God, you have to go through darkness. Before you can see the favor of God, you have to go through darkness. It is in darkness that your resolve will be put to test. It's in darkness that your fortitude will be put to the test. It's in darkness that your perseverance will be put to the test. It's in darkness that your patience will be put to the test. It's in darkness that your humility will be put to the test. It's in darkness that your faith will be put to the test. Those that found favor in the sight of God had to endure the toughest of times before favor could manifest itself in their lives. Some of the people that were mentioned last week, we read of every so often about the blessings that they had. But you ever take time to consider of the things that they had to go through to get the blessings that they had. And so as you think about your favor, think about the blessings uh, and think about the blessings. Think about the things that you have to go through to get to the blessing. Abraham was favored amongst men because God chose him. God called him out from his family, told him to leave his family, to leave everything and go where he would you'd take him. God didn't tell him where he was taking him. He just told him, I'll, I'll, I'll show you where I want you to go. And A Abraham, or Abram at the time, believed God and did as God had asked him. Abram found favor in sight of God, and God in, in Exodus, in, in Genesis, um, we read the, the chapter 12 to uh, chapter 15 of the, of, the, of the promises, the covenants that God makes with Abraham, that out of him shall all the nations be, that he will, he will make his seed to be, or he will be the father of many nations. So can you imagine when, when Abraham is one day at his house and God says to him, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, and offer him up as a sacrifice. Can you imagine walking, in, walking up to the mountain after he'd left the servants and thinking to himself, this is supposed to be the promised child. This was what I was promised in my old age, can you imagine what he would have had to say or what he would have felt like as he said to uh, his son Isaac when the question was asked, you know, we have everything we need except the main thing. Can you imagine what he would have felt in that moment? But it was in this darkness that God was testing Abraham's faith. And Abraham's response was that of God shall provide himself a sacrifice. Before Abraham could receive all that the promises of God were, he had to endure toughest times. He was separated from, his, um, he, uh, from Lot. And, and when time came, because they, they had too much uh, livestock, Lot picked what was the best grounds and left Abraham with whatever else. But we see the end of Abraham as we read in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11. That God favored him to receive everything that he received. It is in the story of Joseph that we, we find the favor of God as we, we, re, we heard of last week. That Joseph was favored not only of God but also of his father. Because he was a child of his old age. And Joseph was given or was made the coat of many colors. 
which made his brothers very angry, very jealous of him. But the favor of God never left Joseph. Between chapter 37 and the ensuing things that happened, the favor of God never left Joseph. He may have felt like it did because not only did his brothers hate him, they also sold him into slavery. Not only did they sell him into slavery, and not only did he did, did, did have to go through slavery and work in, in, in Potiphar's house, but he found favor while he was in Potiphar's house. And that God multiplied everything that he touched. But that was not the end of it all because we see that even while favor was still operating in his life, darkness was coming. In that Potiphar's wife found reasons to accuse him and to send him to jail. And in jail, he also found favor because the favor of God never leaves us. Wherever we are, the favor of God never leaves leaves us and even in jail he found favor and as he found favor he told those that he interpreted dreams to remember me when you get out the bible doesn't tell us how long he spent after he had said those words but he must have felt like what has god what what did i do to deserve this all i've been trying to do was right everything i've been trying to do was trying to do right. But darkness was still upon his life. It is in the story of Hannah that we see that God shut up her womb. God shut up her womb that she could not give birth. And so she had to go to prayer and ask God and ask God repeatedly Year upon year, she went to pray and ask God for favor, ask God to give her a child. Penina could be seen as the darkness that fell upon Hannah because of the tormenting and the taunting that she received from him. While she could not bear a child, she still had favor upon her life. David found favor in the sight of God. Even while his own father could not acknowledge him, he still had favor in the sight of God. But as we read through the Psalms, we see many times David going through some of the most troubling and, and, and some of the tri more trying times of his life. Before he became king, when he was anointed, he went through some of the toughest time of his life. To the point where when we read through the, the Psalms, we, we read of him saying, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What makes somebody think to write such a thing? That they would think that they're going through such darkness that they cannot see anything in sight. Mary found favor in the sight of God. But I want you to picture yourself in the sight or I want you to put yourself in the eyes or in the place of Mary. You're betrothed to be married to Joseph. It is custom that in those days that nothing, no conjugal relations should take place before marriage. And so can you imagine Mary, this young damsel, being pregnant with child to a man that they would have presumed when they were not yet married? Can you imagine what her life would have been like? Can you imagine those nine months she would have spent while people looked at her and, 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 and mocked her? And, said, and may, maybe said many bad things about the situation because they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what was happening. 
and in those times could be seen as Mary's darkness moment, darkest moments, when she has to go through something she did not want herself, she did not plan herself, but God had plans for her. Finally, Naomi. Last week we heard about Ruth, but for me the most interesting out of that story was Naomi. Naomi is to women what Job is to men. Naomi is to women what Job is to men. She lost almost everything save one person. One person that tied her back to the favor of God. This is what I want, to, I want you to know. When you look at Naomi's story, again, put yourself in the context of Naomi, in the culture of the time, not in the culture of today, in the culture of the time. Now, there's certain things that we say that are true. And don't beat me up here. Of the two sexes, the woman is the weaker, biologically speaking. Of women, old women are the most feeble. Of old women, widows are the most woeful. Of widows that are poor, their plight is most pitiful. Of poor widows who want child, their case is the most doleful. Of widows that want after having children and lost them, their case is the most desolate. Of widows that have had children that are strangers in foreign country, their situation is the most comfortless. Yet all these things we find in the story of Naomi. She lost her husband, she lost her children, and all she was left with was Ruth in a foreign country where women were, were, were not working. They, were, they, they, they did not work. They did not earn income to be able to support themselves. The only type of women that worked were prostitutes. They're the only women that worked at the time. And so Naomi finds herself in this situation, in the most darkest of situations, she had to endure the darkest of times. But in enduring the darkest of times, whatever Ruth en enjoyed after marrying both, Naomi enjoyed the same too. It's this then that we see that Naomi is named as in the lineage of Jesus. Naomi is in the lineage of Jesus. That is favor. So I ask myself the question, why is it that we have to go through darkness to get to the favor of God? Why do we have to go through darkness to get the favor of God, to get to that favor of God? You would never appreciate light or darkness you never appreciate light if you've never been through darkness. You would never appreciate. Opposites help us appreciate the other side. If you've never, 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 uh, never seen um, light, darkness is, is nothing to you. It's what you're used to. But you appreciate light when you've been through the darkness. I can tell you this for sure. I appreciated getting back home after that walk. Because walking through that darkness, I was scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. I, 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 was, I was fretting. I was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking all kinds of things. But the minute I got home to grandma's house and there was light, I appreciated it ever the more. Because I realized how important light is. If the sun and the moon cease to shine, there would be chaos around the world. Can you imagine if the sun and the moon and the stars cease to shine? For just a day, there would be an imaginable chaos around the world. And so 
Darkness sometimes, or in most cases, darkness brings about chaos. But this is the thing. It's in chaos that God works his best work. It is in chaos that God does his best work. Jesus calls out, peace be still in the midst of the storm. It is in darkness that the seed becomes to be, uh, begins to become the mighty oak. It is in darkness that we find ourselves in the secret place where we are alone with God. The writer of Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place shall, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That shadow is a portrayal of darkness. We say, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. But are we willing to go through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death, to get to the goodness and mercy? Are we willing to go through the valley of the shadow, the, shadow, uh, the valley of the shadow of death, to endure or to get to the goodness and mercy? Micah chapter 7 verse 7 says, Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait upon God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemies. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. It was God that was showing us from the beginning that it doesn't matter what state you're in. You can be empty and void. He will still make something out of you. That's why the statement that we read at the beginning in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. Before God can begin to do the work that he was going to do over the next six days, the work of creation, there was emptiness and void and darkness that was upon the face of the earth. But that never stopped God from doing what God, only God, can do. It is in the emptiness of the earth that we see the creation of God begin to take a, a, a place. He spoke things into being that were not because the words the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. He spoke things into being. It was in this chaos and nothingness that God showed us from the beginning that he could make something out of nothing. And so when I look at the favor of God, and I think about the favor of God, I ask myself the question, am I willing to go through the valley of the shadow of death to get to the goodness and mercy? Favor, the favor of God is upon each and every one of us. But to get to the favor of God, you have to endure tough times. You have to endure darkness. Those that were highly favored also endured darkest of times. You, you look at the Bible and, and it's there to see. Those that were highly favored also endured the toughest of times. And so I ask myself, you know, maybe I just want small favor. Because <laughs> then the darkness is small. <laughs> so that I, I can endure better small darkness. A, 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 a room lit by a candle is better than a, a room not lit at all. Right? And so you say to yourself, ah, God, God, I, I, can, I can endure this little bit. But I ask myself, if, if God was to highly favor me, can I endure the darkest of times? Will my patience be able to stand? Will, will I be able to persevere? 
Will I be able to have enough resolve that the, when the winds of this world, when the pressures of this world are pressing up against me, when everything feels like it's going left, just like it did for Naomi, because when you see that, when you read through the story of Naomi, uh, Bethlehem and Judah was was going through a famine, and so um, and so they they escaped famine, but when they escaped famine, they escaped to something that was even worse than what they had left. And so as, as we seek after, as we, as we walk in the favor of God, are, are we saying to ourselves, are we willing to endure? Are we willing to endure being put in jail for no good reason? Are we willing to endure um, being, being uh, talked about negatively because of something that God has done like Hannah when God shut up her womb? Are we willing to, to be like David? And go through troubles where the king Saul was after his life because he didn't like the fact that he was going to be replaced. Are we willing to be like Mary and say, God made it so. And so I'll walk in it. Just imagine Joseph. This is Joseph, old Mary. And the things that he had to endure to a point where he, he, the angel had to appear to him and say, don't be afraid. Whatever is happening is happening for a reason. God, God has a plan. So you, you can imagine what he was thinking. And so I asked myself the question, am I willing to endure darkness to see the favor of God in my life? Are you willing to endure darkness to see the favor of God in your life? Are, we, are you willing to go through the valley of the shadow of death to endure favor? Uh, to, to, uh, are you willing to uh, endure going through the, the shadow of darkness in your life to see the favor of God in your life? It is in this story that we find hope that God says favor never leaves you. The favor of God never leaves you. And yes, you may go through the valley of the shadow of darkness, but the favor of God never leaves you. And this is what we see in the book of Genesis. Because it says, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. It says, and the spirit of the Lord. So it didn't matter what was happening. The spirit of the Lord was still there. It doesn't matter that there was darkness. It doesn't matter that there was emptiness. It doesn't matter that it was deep and void. And no, the spirit of God was still upon the face of the waters. It is this that we find hope that it doesn't matter what situations I find myself in. That I know because I believe in God, because I trust in God. It's in these situations that we get to see the goodness of God. That we get to see the mercies of God. That we get to see everything that God has planned for us. And so when, 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 when uh, David says, uh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it is in the shadow that we remember that no shadow is cast without light. That God is always there. That even when there was darkness, God was still there. Before the beginning of time, God was still there. Before the foundations of the earth, God was still there. While the earth was null and void, God was there. And so in the valley of the shadow of darkness, God is there. And so as, as I think about this, I think to myself, yes, God has favor upon our lives and upon my life. And so no matter what comes my way, no matter how deep the darkness is, there is nothing that God is not an overcomer of. There is nothing that God does not cover upon. It says even 
even though there was darkness and void and, and things were not right and there was chaos, God was still over, over everything that was happening. Let us stand. It is in the emptiness of people's lives that we see the miracles of Jesus taking place. You cannot do, you cannot help somebody who doesn't need help. And Jesus demonstrates that throughout the Gospels. He did, he did not come for those that were righteous. He did not come that for those that were just. He did not come for those that were uh, felt like as though they, they were already there. He came for people that were needing of him. He came for the poor in spirit because it says, for theirs is the kingdom. He says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And so, it is upon us then that the favor of God is upon our lives. But with the favor of God comes trials and tribulation. Because the devil is always going to try and deviate your plan. He's always going to try and, uh, and, and disrupt your path. He's always going to try and put things to put you out of your path. It's always going to seem like there is darkness and you cannot see your way forward. But remember this, that just as Abram had to endure, just as, as, as Mary had to endure, just as uh, Joseph and David and all, all the other people that we, we read about from the Bible had to endure, the same will be of us, that as long as we endure, to the end, we'll find favor in the sight of God. Let us lift up our hands at this time. Lord Jesus, we're coming before you. We thank you, Jesus, because we know that your favor rests upon us, O oh God. It is undeserved, O oh God. We, we haven't done anything to, to deserve it, of it. But Lord Jesus, we are praying that as we come before you, Lord God, Lord Jesus, as we put ourselves before you, O oh God, help us to remember that even though we shall walk through the valley of the shadow of death, O oh Lord Jesus, help us to remember not to fear any evil, any evil because you are with us and that you walk before us, O oh God, and that you encompass around about us and that your angels, O oh God, are fighting for us, O oh God. So help us to remember, Lord Jesus, that your favor is upon us. And as we rest upon under the shadow of your wing, O oh God, in that secret place, O oh Lord Jesus, let us remember that you are there with us. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Maybe there's someone here today that thinks they're going through what seems like a valley of shadows that they cannot comprehend. Maybe you feel like you're going through the toughest of times. I want to say to you this afternoon, you are not alone. The Bible says, Sammy says, for you are with me. God is with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. That's what the Bible says. He will not leave you nor forsake you. As long as you put yourself under the shadow of the Almighty, He will not leave you nor forsake you. So if you do need 
that comfort, if you do need that help, if you need to commit yourself and say, God, I can't do it, this is your time. Just raise up your hand and we'll pray with you. And we'll ask God, whatever situation it is, whatever problem it is, that God can begin to show you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. That though you're walking through what seems like darkness, his favor rests upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your favor which is upon us. Thank you that you've highly favored us, O oh God, and counted us worthy to be part of your kingdom. We pray, God, that as we go from this place, Lord, that you'd go before us, that your favor would go before us, that everything, oh God, all the goodness, all the, all the things of the kingdom, the richest of things of the kingdoms will go, will go before us, oh God. We pray this in your mighty name and everybody say it. Amen and amen and amen. Greet one another in Jesus' name.